All right, folks, welcome to Nino's Corner.tv Fluff Tube Edition. I'm with Bo Pony. Bo Pony, oh my God, what's going on? And there's a lot going on these next 90 days of what you've been telling me. So I'm going to let you have the floor here. First of all, thank you for coming back on the show. Uh, appreciate it. You know, I love what you do. Uh, you got the biggest heart. God is using you uh, all over the place. So, you know, you are the exposer of what's going on. And thank you for all of the, your time and energy you're putting into this stuff because I know it takes a lot of time and energy to put into this stuff. It wipes you out sometimes, you know, but it's good that God has continued to refresh you. Especially when you get kicked in the nuts repeatedly by trolls. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, uh, but that anyway. means, means you're doing something right. I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, Bo, so what's going on? I mean, I, I know going into, we're in March now, going into April, May, I know according to their calendar, the, the, the guy, they, they, when I say they, um, there's some big things that are supposed to happen this month and next. And we have a big solar eclipse happening April 8th, and I'm sure this all feeds into it, correct? Yes, ab absolutely. Because again, we're not living in political times we're living in biblical times so what do i mean by that think about it right time of nebuchadnezzar the time of rome the time of the papacies you know we've seen deaths going back thousands of years none of this is new it just uh you know we're feeling it per it's a, this is personal why because we're witnessing and we're watching it happen right in front of us but none of this is new this goes back all the way back to the garden of eden why what happened there you know evil got on the earth yeah, and he, he he usurped, he stole our inheritance. This goes back to the garden. Uh, and specifically, you know, it's it's about, you know, we battle not against flesh and blood, but principalities of darkness. And actually, there is is a, um, on a Bible out there, what I just discovered, and the Bible actually specifically itemizes or it states who the, uh, you know, who the, the entities of darkness are, and specific, not even entity, it's the prince of darkness, okay? So we literally are battling against the prince of darkness and that is what is going on this goes all the way back to the garden and there's and these and the prince of darkness who is he he's a fallen angel who hates i want to repeat this so clearly he hates you he hates you why because you and i say you i mean all these people listening he hates you because why you are made in the image of god and he hates you for it. And, you know, so we say, well, how could all this evil be going on in the world? How could people be doing this stuff? Well, very simple. Because the people that are doing this stuff, are they're, they're demon-possessed by the fallen ones, all working for the angel of death. You know, all working for, sorry, all working for Satan. All working for the great deceiver. And so, you know, you, you told me earlier, you did, you did some podcasts with, you know, with some people from Hollywood. Why? Hollywood is just one example of the complete and utter infiltration of evil. Period. Yeah, yeah. But this this interview specifically, man, wow, it's it's really sad to see something like this. That you know, when I have these people on, that I just you want to admire that. Well, you, I do admire them, but you want to. Uh, a lot of people are envious of their careers and you know, you know, fame and all that. But it's not what it's all cracked up to be, man. It's it's a really it can be a very horrific life. Oh, I just I I know people as specific, and I just want to say for them to have gotten to there, like you can only get so far and so high up the food chain, and then you hit a wall. It's like silver hitting a wall at twenty five dollars and gold at twenty two hundred bucks, right? It's I mean, a wall. It's a roof. You hit a it, roof. You can't get higher up that roof unless you do certain things right, or right, allow exactly. certain things to be happen to you. Right, but that's speaking for adults. But what if you're a child star? And so that right there. So I just interviewed Ricky Schroeder, and and I got to tell you, folks, you got to watch that on Nino's Corner TV. It's very revealing. Anyway, well, go ahead. Yeah, no, but but you got to blame the parents as well too, because the parents see they're they're living vicariously through their kids, and so they actually, as crazy as this is, kind of like might blame the child for it. For what's going on well he reveals all that he actually discusses that in the interview which is very eye-opening i i gotta tell you man like i have a new respect for this guy he, he's a he's a true survivor anyway but let's get into this let's yeah. go into this uh timeline here what's gonna happen march what march april and uh may or, or june is june involved right, so there well what i basically said last podcast we went on i said you know starting in march you got march april and may so the next 90 days so i'm, I'm again we're still on this on that path 
we're still talking about things are beginning and supposed to start in the month of March. So we just started from the biblical standpoint, and they're using the Julian calendar just last week, the 14th started potentially 2024, but this could also be right into the 25th of March. So we're going to find out how all of this pans out, but we're at a really critical time point where things are about to, you can use the word start, okay? We're going to start, start to see things that are wild. And that's why I think the great title for this podcast, I was like, going, God, what should we call this title? He's like, oh my God, <laughs> because that is what people are going to be saying when, when God intervenes upon the world, you know, it's like, you know, there are, everyone's, you know, so many atheists, right, maybe in the, in the military, but how many atheists are there in a foxhole? Zero. Zero, okay? When those bulls are flying over your head, all the atheists are calling out to God, okay? And so we are going to, we're stepping in right now, we're about to witness biblical events that are going to transpire on this world with our own eyes, we are going to witness things that we're not going to, it's going to be very, very difficult to deny that we are wish, witnessing impossibilities happening, miracles, signs, and wonder. We're going to see things that are just mind-blowing that we're not going to be able to explain, and, and that's what a miracle is. So, so do you think it, it. it starts in March, like start it, you're, you're saying starting now, or does it start at or after the eclipse? I believe we're going to see something manifest and trigger before the eclipse. Nothing's going to happen on the day of the eclipse. That's my best guess. Okay. Everyone thinks, oh my gosh, fashion your seatbelts on April 8th. All hell breaks loose. I, I, it could, but I think it's the day after we're going to start to see things. So it's, you would, I would look at the eclipse as a starting point, not as, you know, the, the day after. Didn't the last eclipse, uh, wasn't that in October? And then the whole thing would, Israel happened was it or am I wrong right so I want to get I'll, so we'll talk about the eclipse in a second I'm going to pull my pot my slides up in just a sec because there's some st stuff about the eclipse that God revealed to me and most people aren't even talking about and also specifically about another eclipse uh set that's coming up in the future that's going to be mind-blowing and so all of this is again in God's perfect timing so anybody that's watching you know the news and the media again news and media are controlled you know john 10 10 you know satan comes to uh, steal and destroy so when you're watching the news like you know you're you go, you're an incredible you go out there you put all the news out there but all that news that you're putting out again is what they want us to hear and 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 watch you know so this is of the devil okay and then life you know jesus christ comes to give us life life more abundantly and so anything that's always ugly scary or you know or seriously concerning is of evil while god is the opposite because he wants to give us life and abundance you know he when god made everything he then gave it to man problem is man fell gave it all gave it all to satan and now satan's on the earth and all hell's breaking loose you know every every few hundred years and so now but we're at a very important time point where things are starting to manifest so let me just pull this put the slide deck up and let's kind of get into the into the into the excitement stuff into the really fun stuff so we can really understand how this is um perfectly shaping up okay i'm not saying this is this is random. No, no, everything is perfect. And the reason I can say perfect is, remember, we I always reference, go back to the two and a half thousand year prophecy, okay? Two and a half thousand years go by, every single kingdom has existed and disappeared. We're talking Babylon, Persia, Greece, and this was all a prophecy of two and a half thousand years ago. All of it has existed. We're not living in biblical time and political times. These are biblical times. I think a great title for this show is, Oh My God, between March now into June. And you'll see why when I go through these uh, slides here, you'll see why starting March and into June is just, uh, it, it's it's going to shift the world. And that's the best I can describe. I did list, have a chance to listen to your podcast yesterday, Nino. And everything that you said in there uh, is the truth, provided that God doesn't intervene on the world. You see, because if God intervenes upon the world, all of their plans will be stopped and these people will be destroyed and, and the rest that remain are going to have to go into hiding. However, should God not intervene, then you're 100% right. All this is going to start to manifest now. But from my calculations is God's still going to set up a window of divine favor for the bride and then these people get destroyed 
and they go the rest go into hiding and then they come back up in the future and then everything you described yesterday is is on the mark of what these because all they're doing right now is there there is nothing new look, look what happened in nazi germany see these people don't do anything new there's nothing new under the sun they're literally just at the same playbook you know, whatever, 70, 80, uh, 80, 90 years. And actually, in this case, it's 90 years later. Same playbook, okay? We're, we're watching. So as horrific things were going on then, we're watching the same stuff go off right now. So I want to say, actually, those who want this uh, free, I'm going to say, and if you want this free slide deck, I moved the QR code over to the middle. Though, so this time you can actually get it, but you can download this free slide deck it is free it'll give you a very detailed uh, understanding of what whatever we don't don't even get to today but then again everything we talk about is in this slide deck i do want to make a quick little shout out um for what i'm doing here uh those who are interested i'm actually putting out a book which went live yesterday for pre-sale so anybody who wants the book you can just uh, go to my website and get and get the book but basically the book is a detailed detailed analogy from now on into the future and yes it even talks about aliens uh and 20 the year 2030 and everything else so let's get back to what i want to talk about so while we're watching a stone carved out by no human hand comes down and destroys babylon Okay, so when, you know, <clears throat> if you study scriptures, where was the last time we actually saw this event happen? It's called the Tower of Babel. What was the Tower of Babel? They were trying to bring on a one world government. This was Nimrod. He was trying to bring on a one world government. He was almost about to put the capstone on. So look at the back of your dollar bill is like a thing called a capstone. Mm, yeah. They were almost about to put the capstone on and then something happened. God showed up. God showed up. Like he up. lets him get to the almost to the to the right to the threshold and then interrupts it. Thank you. You see, God shows, it's like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, so the three that were thrown in the fire. Okay. You have to think about, when did God show up? He didn't show up when they're being thrown in the fire. No, no, he showed up in the fire. Think about that for a second. God shows up when there's no way out. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar said, oh, out so, there's there's so wait a second. So this really, this is going to be a near-death experience. I was wanting to, it said many times. Yes, uh, the United We're not going to swerve gonna... and barely miss it. We're going to hit it head on, and then God shows up, correct? I'll answer that with a, with a question, then I'll answer your question. But look at what happened to Jesus on the cross. He died. Right, right, right. Evil. So, and, and more importantly, this is, this is so easy for people to understand. He died on the cross on Thursday, and Friday... They changed Friday to what? What's Friday called? The day after he he dies. It's called what? What Friday? Good, Friday. Good Friday. Why is it Good Friday? Because the evil ones are celebrating the death of Jesus. Do you get it? You see, they're celebrating their victory. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, it was a celebration for evil. They even called the next day Good Friday only to find out on Sunday it was the stupidest, dumbest, hor most horrific thing they could have ever done. That was the greatest mistake evil, evil ever made on this earth. Why? Because Jesus rose from the dead and proved to the world that he is God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. And he, most importantly, he gave the church his blood, but the key was he became the final Adam. So he fixed what happened in the garden. Jesus' resurrection fixed what happened in the garden. And now via the blood of Jesus, we can stomp on the neck and heads of scorp scorpions and serpents. It almost like nullified the, the just tail. Nullified the contract, right? Exactly. Because that we, when they let evil come on the earth, Adam and Eve, they gave evil legal authority. Evil got legal authority. And so back to this, when does God show up? When there's no way out. So we are going to go ahead into a near-death experience. Why? Because look what happened at Tower of Babel. The, 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 the Bible is full of stories and explanations of how this is going to play out. There's only new characters and new timelines. 
but it's the same type of events it's the same type of type and shadow of what happened in history so we're, we're talking what babylon i'm going to show you when babylon fell because you're going to freak out when you realize all of these timelines are incredible they're not so, almost perfect they're they're absolutely perfect continue so are you are you saying that in 90 days this is going to happen because because i mean my audience you know they they're going to hold you accountable to this boat <laughs> no and that's and i can say this if if I mean, there ever was you did say time christmas time. in november you said christmas in november and okay well, I, so, and 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 let me ask you a question. Did I not? Why well, wasn't I the only person on the entire internet that predicted the sixth the war that happened in October? Give me one more body of person that, that predicted that war. I did it on your show, you know. Oh, yeah, you got it. You got it. I, I'm not going to debate that. You, my you were ridiculing me. You were ridiculing me about the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl and who won the Super Bowl. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl exactly yeah. like we did on our forecast. <laughs> so you you can take one mistake, which is my opinion, or the 30 things I nailed to the exact day. Which one? Okay, fair enough. On fair enough. Fair enough. I'm not arguing. So I, I'm just I'm just playing devil's advocate here, man. No, and yeah. I appreciate that, but the, but the viewers need to understand this. Just because nothing happened in November doesn't mean that we're not in Revelation. Doesn't mean that Christ is not returning. Doesn't mean that we're not witnessing the seals of Revelation. Doesn't I, I'm mean not that we're saying not in that at all. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying, you know, I was the only one on on the internet that predicted that stated. That when Corona came on scene, that was the first seal of revelation. Now there's podcasters all over the place attesting to what I stated. The first one on the internet four years ago. I did it on February on USA Watchdog with Greg Hunter. So all I, all I got to say is if you want perfection, I think people should look for Jesus. Okay, because he don't make mistakes. But I am human, and I'm I'm batting pretty good. But but it's not me because all I want to say is not me because if I screw up, it's me screwing up. If I get it right, it's because I've listened closely to what God was showing me. But every victory is God showing me. And so, are you are you saying stating, that there's going to be a victory before November? There's going to be a huge event that if there was ever a time that we would see the fall of Babylon, the present day Babylon, it would be. In the next 90 days, I'll give I'm gonna give you a month in a second. Okay. So let, let's let's go through here what month this is supposed to go down, but it will happen in the next 90 days if this is going to play out based on biblical timing. So we're looking for the fall of Babylon, we're looking for a fulfillment of revelation in a single day. The kings of the earth will weep and wail. These kings of the earth control Hollywood. We've talked about this: the church, the family, uh, the financial system, education, government, entertainment, media, all of it's controlled. And this goes back again to the Tower of Babel. You had Nimrod, he was uh God intervened nimrod fled he went to iraq changed his name to gilgamesh now we got what's called the gilgamesh project the gilgamesh project you got the letter g in, in the freemasons so here's your masons there's their logo that's the gilgamesh project and they're doing nothing different than what's new under the sun they're they're rebuilding babylon and now it's simply called mystery babylon no different Nothing new, nothing new under the sun. We had the Chiefs victory. The Chiefs victory stated very specifically after they win, we're going to step into the greatest revival in human history. Well, why That's Why is that so, hold on. Why is that so important, Chiefs winning? I mean, I know you. we did a show on this, but why would, is it from a prophecy or is why would God care yeah, about it? Had, it, it, God uses all things for his glory. This is actually in, this is scripture. God uses all things, okay? And so why this was important? Very simply, he just was showing the world that he's involved in everything, okay? The bottom line was, it was thrown from the three-yard line, three, three seconds left in the game. Um, number 33 missed it. And the, the address was three, three, three. And this was most importantly, this was the this was the trifecta. This is the third victory. And so it's just God just revealing himself, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And so all we're witnessing is God's involved in everything because we're living in biblical times, not in political times. The victory itself, all it was was just a marker in time that was prophesied over 40 years ago. That's all it was. And the, 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 this basically confirmed that we're going to witness the greatest revival in human history, because that's what the prophecy was. We talked about the two clocks, how they mess with the clocks. We're stepping into a time point called the midnight hour, where basically light, or the better word with darkness, because all the deals done in darkness are going to meet the light. The light is the exposure of all the deals done in the darkness. So we're stepping into that. It's supposed to start here as we are in March, or before month 
end, we should, we should, we could have seen something. And so let's get into the calendar here. Okay. So right now I, uh, I put a little box around here. Today is just for the viewers. So they know today is March 19th. Uh, there was a prophetic word. I don't have time to play it today, but there's a prophetic word by Kent Christmas. It says in the next seven days, and he posted this on the 19th, the evil will receive a mortal wound that they cannot recover from. So tomorrow mm. is very I wonder if that has something to do with the royal family. There's a lot no, of drama no. happening within the royal family right now. No, because the prophetic word was in the United States. So the United so in the United States, there'll be a well, mortal wound of the enemy. I mean, all right. Yeah, but that, um, so we'll see. Again, I can't argue because I don't know. We're talking events. I'm just giving some some time windows we can look at. Tomorrow is is very critical as well because tomorrow starts spring. Remember we said in our last podcast, if God's going to do something, he's going to bring on a new, he's going to birth because God basically is going to birth a new era. A new era would be the, because because God's kingdom and Babylon and the devil's kingdom cannot exist, coexist. So if God's going to bring his kingdom to earth, we're going to see the rise of his kingdom, Babylon must fall. It must fall because both cannot coexist. Light and darkness cannot coexist. And so tomorrow is spring. So if God's going to spring forth something, he's not going to do it in the dead of winter. He's going to do it in the spring time. Tomorrow spot starts spring. And that would be coincidental to the prophetic word in the next seven days. God's going to strike a mortal wound in the United States to an end, and they will not be able to recover from this mortal wound that's about to happen. So will it happen? I don't know, but I'm going to show, we're going to continue here into the 22nd. So this is, like you say, they operate on their dates and their time points, right, Nino? So this yes. Friday is 322. You can Google skull and bones, but basically that is this Friday. Do they strike? Do they do something? I don't know, but this Friday is 322. If you run the advent calendar and you re, and using Exodus, Exodus 12, 3 states on the 10th day, you get your lamb and you prepare for what's coming at Passover. So this weekend, we've talked about this, but this weekend, Nino, is something pretty exciting because this weekend is the story of Esther and Purim. Trump, 45, let's just say 45 happens to be married to Melania, exactly 7,000 days to the exact day. So I would I would adjust this and I would say that this would be a, a huge, huge, important clinic uh time point of things about to begin and start because we're steady because the esther prophecy or what happened with esther was literally turned into Haman end up hanging on his own gallows and that's why we have what was called the hangman okay and so it was him and his 10 sons end up hanging so we are stepping into a time point where this is going to happen and it starts if this all this is beginning supposed to begin here and now as we're march into june so that's this weekend so that will be the 23rd into the 24th. There is a potential time point here of a New Year's Day again on the 25th. So we will see because that's double dating calendar. So we'll see. But March again is still the March. By the time we step into April, we should be stepping into the new year. And then if we run the Exodus calculations, that would mean that Passover, based on the Julian calendar, not the Hebrew calendar, the Hebrew calendar has Passover in April. We'll get to that in a second. The Julian calendar is saying that Passover would be here uh, on, on the 27th into the 28th that evening. And so on the Julian calendar, we get to what's called Nisan 15. Nisan 15, I want to show you this, what happened on Nisan 15. That's the day that Jesus was crucified based on Nisan 15. That's the day um, Isaac was tricked to bless Jacob. The Gideon army of 300 was assembled. God's angel killed 185 Assyrian soldiers. That was the Haman effect. That, that was um, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, and this is critical. Belshazzar drank from the vessels, and Belshazzar died that night. You're you're muted right now, uh, David. Oh, so um, and Belshazzar died that night. So that would be the fifteenth of Nisan. So does the fifteenth of Nisan tie in with all of this? We will find out soon enough. But we're stepping into a really important time because then what happens? Thursday, Friday, Saturday into Sunday. Sunday the 31st is resurrection. This is Easter. It's the 31st this month, huh? Yes. This is e so Easter. This would be Good Fridays on the 29th over here. Wow, it's, uh, that's right. Yes. So so God, and do I'll just say this. There between now and May, and I'll give you a date in May. Between now and May, expect this to happen. Three days of darkness. The internet goes down. All TV broadcasting, everything goes dark. 
something's about to happen anytime March into May, everything's going to go dark worldwide because like we said before, well, they're, if, they're, kind of conditioning us, they're kind of conditioning us for this solar eclipse that, that things are going to go dark around that time. You're saying before that? No, I don't know. When. I'm saying, okay, no, I'm saying, I'm going to say between the, the weekend of Easter into May, somewhere in that window, I'll give you why in a second, we're going to go dark for three days, but this is the point. Okay. We're getting into now between March into May a moment in time that God's going to strike the earth, he will not reveal it to anybody because if God revealed the day we go dark for three days, the day that God strikes that 24-hour window, evil might have a counter offensive to what God's about to, about to do to the world. This is the checkmate that God's about to strike evil with. So we don't know when. I'm just I'm giving you a window. So be some of the weekend of Easter into May, we're going to see that three days of darkness manifest on the earth. You say three days of darkness. Watch. Are you just talking about like, no internet connection? Or are you talking about everything? Uh, it could be everything. It could tie in with the eclipse as well, too. We could see the three, that eclipse could last three days. See, I don't know because nobody knows. There isn't one prophet. God hasn't spoken through anybody exactly how this is going to go down. Because why? If he did, if God revealed how he's going to play this out again, evil would try to create a counteroffensive to stop it from actually happening and manifesting. So we're stepping into a really critical time point. I want to then continue here. So that moment in time when God intervenes, the kings of the earth will weep and wail. They're going to, we're going to fulfill Revelation 18. These people are going to freak out because when, the, when their deals that they did get exposed, they are truly finished globally. Not just in the United States, in the States, but globally. So now let's get into the next month. This is April. Okay. So if you run the, the the Hebrew calendar, the Hebrew calendar takes us all the way into the 22nd over here for Passover. Now, also, I want to have people understand what happened at Passover. Just you have to understand Passover is what's called the angel of death moment. The angel of death came upon Pharaoh, destroyed all, all of the firstborn of Egypt and passed over Goshen. The same thing is going to happen. The angel of death's on the earth. When the angel of death strikes, we're going to see hundreds, probably thousands of deaths in a single night because this the angel that struck Pharaoh. This is no different than what happened thousands of years ago. We just don't know exactly the days and how this is going to play out, but I'm giving us a window of time that we all want to fasten our seatbelts for. So we're stepping, so the Red Sea, and if that actually could actually happen in March, it could happen in March if we run it on the Julian calendar, like we said here. We actually could happen, see this happen here next week. So I don't know. I'm just running the math watching with everybody because I'm so excited what's about to happen, but also I'm doing this so people don't be freaking out or, or shocked of, you know, when this all happens to know that this is by God's design. It's not random. So if the Hebrew calendar says that Passover is uh, the 22nd over here, and that would be, and so we, if we look, that would be uh, the same calculated time point for a possible Red Sea miracle. So we'll watch and see how this is going to play out but we also have an incredibly awesome time point is April 21st. Those who know my math, April 21 is 421, and this year is 24. This is crazy. So this 21st of April is 421124. It's an it's a critically important mm. time point for the world. That is a moment of time where I believe this the 22nd that that time point is going to be critical for our world and then i want to get into your your eclipses here that you're referencing okay so here's the eclipse that's about to happen okay so check this stuff out this is god revealed to me so the eclipse from resurrection you know it's actually seven days seven to eight days seven days to the eclipse so from resurrection seven days to the eclipse oh wow okay and then from the eclipse it's exactly to the exact day the date of the election that the election that's coming how many? Exactly seven months to the exact day. Wow. Okay. You see, so what I'm trying to show the world is this is by design. You, you can't have from the resurrection seven days. How would you get this? And then you got the eclipse and then exactly seven months to the exact day you're at, you're at the uh, election. A lot of synchronicities for sure. Yeah. 
that's the point. See, the, the, when when there's so many synchronicities, like I've just all those into my podcast. There aren't any coincidences. There are no synchronicities. They're by design. A synchronicity is something that's by design, and we just watch it play out. Okay. And so then the, also that cross. So we've got a cross in seven days from resurrection, seven seven years apart. Okay. And it passes over seven cities called Salem, and that was in 2017. And this time it's crossing over seven cities called Nineveh. So we're seeing this cross formation. And there's a story of Jonah. Now, well, this is where we want to pay attention. The story of Jonah, Jonah 3, 4, talks about 40 days. If you run, this is people, we've got to write this down. So important. 40 days when God's going to bring judgment on the world, okay? So let's just read scripture. Is it going to happen? I don't know, but I'm going to, I'm reading scripture to you. It says in Jonah 3, 4, that if, if, if this is the Jonah sign, you run 40 days, that takes you to May 18th. 40 days from Jonah is May 18th. Now, this is the wild part, because if Jonah is the marker, those who've watched my show in the past, okay? Remember in 2020, Nino, what happened? We had oil go to negative $38 a barrel. That was a marker, just like the Jonah is a marker right now. 30 days from oil going to zero, you had the George, you had the Edenville Dam break in the township of Hope, Michigan, marking the water breaking. And then 10 days later, you had specifically Pentecost. You had Pentecost 40 days from oil going to zero. What a coincidence that Jonah 3, 4 talks about 40 days. So if we're going to use the same calculation, 30 days from Jonah is May 8th. Fasten your seatbelts, people. Between May 6th, 7th, and 8th, Holy mackerel, this something's going to start to go down here because then that takes us into 40 days of Jonah, which is May 18th. And then if we do the Red Sea calculations, if you run the 25, it took 25 days for Israel to leave Egypt to get to the Red Sea. They camped for eight days. It was on the 25th day, the Red Sea, they crossed the Red Sea and God closed the Red Sea on Pharaoh's head. Nino? I mean, we all feel it. I mean, every one of my everybody in my audience feels this. I feel it. From, we know from Hebrew coming. Passover, from Hebrew Passover, twenty five days. Let's double check our math. It's the exact day, May eighteenth. May eighteenth. If you run it twenty five days using Exodus calculations, is screaming what? It's screaming that on the twenty fifth day we're going to see a Red Sea miracle, God's judgment on the earth, like He did to Pharaoh. And coincidentally, huh? What a coincidence! That's exactly the 40 days of Jonah to the exact day. Oh, no, it gets better, David, because that evening into the 19th, holy mackerel, Pentecost. Do you know when the Tower of Babel fell? Pentecost. Mm. The Tower, and they twisted everybody's tongues. What happened on Pentecost? Well, the second Pentecost, what? The Holy Spirit came upon the apostles and he started speaking in tongues. God intervened and destroyed all the plans of the devil and the fallen one and the fallen ones and the Satan. He destroyed all of their plans and judgment came upon them. So we're, as that's why I'm saying, so between March, we've got Pentecost or we got Purim. We got resurrection. We got uh, Passover. We got, now we're stepping into the calculations that are all screaming. Watch May 18th, 19th into Pentecost. And then this is wild. Remember, so we talked about, let's, let's, let's wrap it up here. Yom Kippur War. We said there's four critical dates in the Yom Kippur War. And the final peace treaty was signed on the May 31st, 1974. Well, if we run the Tabernacle War, you know, I was on your show before this went down. We nailed the exact day it started. And then we on the 26th, the, the U.S. bombed Syria. And that exactly happened. So the dates are matching. So 1973 and 2023, every there's four key dates. Everyone has so far been 100% on the mark. November 11th, on the on there's nev November 11th, there's a ceasefire. There's a, there's a 
300 people called for a ceasefire. The links are all here. And the last key date is May 31 of 20, 1973 and May 31 of 2024. So what that's saying is that if God, and I'm not going to say if, when God intervenes upon this world, brings judgment upon evil, exposes all their deals and done in darkness, by the time we get to the 31st of May, we'll probably be looking for, they'll probably be signing a peace treaty like they did 50 years ago. The dollar wow. will have collapsed. The dollar will have collapsed. Why will the dollar collapse? Because the silver and gold exploded. We had the BRICS attack the US dollar. Silver and gold exploded. Silver and gold and cryptocurrencies exploded. Why would they explode? Because they attack the US dollar. You attack the US dollar, that's an act of war. Don't be surprised if we see war break out March into April here. And then in the last calculation I can show you and we can finish wrap it up here. If we run from, from uh, Mayflower, look at the Mayflower calculation here, Dave. This is crazy. Everything's screaming May, May, May. The May calculation, Mayflower 16, 2400 years would be the US election. And you run a 3.5 year Daniel cycle. It will be for three time, times and a half a time. Three and a half years from 1620 is May 21st, right here. So right oh. in that window, right in that window. So everything's screaming, fasten your seatbelts. Oh, the last one, I just got to shout this one out too. Um, because everything, because the peace, because the petrodollar contract, which funded all the evil. Back to how we started this, Nino. Remember, how they used the money for all the bribes and payoffs for all of the world, including what's going on in Hollywood, right? So they used the money. Well, the petrodollar contract, 50-year jubilee cycle, ends this June 9th because it was officially a contract on the petrodollar contract, June 9th, 74. This June completes 50 years. So I'm so going to fasten this. your seatbelts for the months Bells. ahead. Here we go. Here Thou shalt consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land and to all of its inhabitants. 2024 is going to blow your mind starting now into June 9th. It's going to be wild. God bless you, Nino. Thank you for having me here. You're, you're amazing. Now. What an Thank exciting you. time to, to be here. So I just hope your viewers <laughs> I, I'm watch put, oh my this God, too. Watch this two or three times because I had to go quick. We have we're limited time, but I think the title is I think between now and then people are going to be screaming, Oh my God. Beautiful. Thank you, Bo, for joining me. Oh, and where can people find you, Bo? My website is gold 2020 forecast.com. Gold 2020 forecast. Dot com. Nino, I love you. Thank you for all you do. And again, your audience is really, truly blessed. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here to really put out what? One thing, the good news. This is the good news. God is in charge. He's always been in charge and he always will be in charge. God bless when you I both. say God, I mean Jesus. Thank you, Bo.